Hey there, my name's Rowan Faye, also known as Strayer Guy from Life's Tough Questions. And, well, I'm a type 1 diabetic living here in Australia. Today I'm going to be answering a couple of questions about diabetes in general, so let's have a look, shall we? Question 1. What do you think is one of the biggest obstacles that people living with diabetes face in your current country of residence? I would probably say that one of the biggest difficulties is availability of resources. Now, it wasn't until recently that I actually really looked into this, I guess, and opened my eyes more. But especially people that live more rural areas or that, or different types of diabetes as well. I'm a type 1 diabetic. When I first got diagnosed, I had like a big stay in the hospital. I had educators, nutritionalists, endocrine team. I had a, a renal team doing checks on my kidneys and my like flow of blood between my legs for neuropathy, things like that. Whereas I hear some people, especially in more rural areas, have to like travel in. Their GP gives them very little information and then they're on their own. They have to travel to major cities or they have to try get more information and I think that's probably one of the biggest obstacles that people with any type of illness not necessarily just diabetes but in this case diabetes is getting that information and resources on how to treat what they have and how to live the best life that they can so yeah definitely that is a big one that I've seen more recent years all right so question number two Two. Now we're looking at, do you think it's important to address the cultural differences and how it plays a role in someone's diabetes management and access? Definitely, definitely I think that cultural differences play, a, play an important role. Um, something, for example, I've traveled a lot around Asia and, well, genetically, type 1 diabetes isn't a common thing in Asia. It's slowly getting there, not, not a good thing, but um, just both the amount of people that have it and also the general knowledge of it is quite little. So often if there's something that's come up, whether it be how to treat it or how what kind of foods to eat, things like that, it's not quite understood. And obviously someone with type 1 diabetes can struggle to live the best life that they can without that knowledge. People always telling you, oh, I've got a, a grandmother with diabetes, like just like you, and she eats a raw diet and it's okay. Like, well, no, what type of diabetes does she have? And most of the time it's, yeah, type two diabetes. It can't be treated with a raw diet. So I think that cultural difference on exposure is a very important thing that plays a role with management and I guess, medicinal ways we treat things versus medicines versus, you know, ancient herbal remedies. Like, no, sorry, we are going to need the actual medicine to live. <laughs> so I think it is important, though, to understand the differences and see where people are coming from before just shoving it to the side and saying people don't understand. It's an important role in educating and letting people know so they understand as well. All right, so question three now. Question three. For you personally, what has been the most difficult part of your diabetes journey so far? Oof. No, no, that's, that's, that's an easy one for me. I think the, the biggest thing for me that's been the most difficult part is getting over the attitude that, like, you know, things happen later in life. I mean, when, when you're young, and, you know, I'm not so young nowadays. I, I don't know if I look it, but... Um, like back, you know, teen years, 20s, moving on into 30s, you feel like you're invincible. And like, I always joked this whole like, oh, I'll be happy if I make it to 50 without losing a limb or being blind with diabetes. Like, yeah, it's, it's something that's more realistically hit me in the last, uh, the last, like, you know, five years of my life. I've had more difficulty dealing with health problems and that. And I think that attitude, the attitude that I put to myself about, yeah, it's fine. Just do what you want. Manage your levels. 
I think that's definitely something that getting over, getting over that attitude and treating myself better, I think has been the biggest and the hardest like obstacle of having diabetes type one. Ah, question four. Question four is, why are you so passionate about sharing your diabetes journey and playing a part in advocate for awareness? Well, as I mentioned earlier, not everyone has that same, I'm going to use the word privilege here, to all the great things that I have. Like I said, you know, I've got all of these teams of people that I get for free when other people have to pay money for things. Maybe they don't get things subsided in their healthcare. Maybe they have to pay for basic medications that I get through our system. So I think if I can get the information and I can educate people, I can help people, I can give it to them. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to share this knowledge that I've paid money for with everyone that I can and save them a bit of money, especially if they're struggling to pay for medication, the least I can do is share that knowledge that I paid for to them. So then they can know that too. Maybe they can better their lives. We can all better our lives together. And the more knowledge in that that people have, the more these companies push towards better technology and better things for us because we're all aware of what there is out there. So I think that positiveness and uh, sharing and the wanting to actually be an advocate for these things really stems from the fact that I want people like me to have the best possible life that they can have too. And it took me a long period of my life to realize what that meant. And I'm just hoping that what I say and what I do can help other people as well.